everyone and welcome to London Supercon. I'm here with uh, BPRD artist Lawrence Campbell. Hello Lawrence, how's it going? Hi Joe, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> so you've been on the book uh, quite a long time now. Um, yeah. and how is it you still, you're still able to kind of maintain the enthusiasm? I mean obviously it's a great series but I mean, as an artist how are you able to maintain the enthusiasm? I think, I've, well, I was a fan really before, uh, before it actually started and um, it's, it's coming, the, the story itself is getting closer closer towards the end yes. so everything is frankly at the moment really kicking off and um, yeah I first get the script through and I'm reading them as a fan before anything else and then I go into the process of breaking down the story and then working on it but I mean I'm working with you know, John and Mike and they know the direction of where it's going and the uh, great character writing yes so obviously you were a Hellboy fan presumably before, before, before yeah. you joined the book yeah huge Hellboy fan from the beginning I've uh, always followed that. If I'm really honest, I didn't follow BBRD right at the beginning, uh, but I did book onto it later, kind of thing, through recommendations. And uh, so, yeah, I knew where the book were, uh, was when I kind of took over as a writer. Yes. So, I mean, obviously, Hellboy and his, and his supporting cast are such iconic characters. I mean, what do you think it is about sort of the BBRD? You know, it's, it's impressive. I mean, it's been running for 100 and, yeah. what's that, 140 now, 150? Yeah, it's getting, getting you know, it's, it's like yeah. 13, 14 years of a, a regular series. Right. What do you think is the, the continued appeal of the BPRD and the characters? Well, I think it's kind of human interaction, if I'm honest. And yes. up against um, kind of what, just doing a kind of a crap load of trouble kind of thing. And uh, they're just fighting. And I think that's what I, that's what I appreciate out of it. But yes. the characters themselves really strong. I like the way that they don't all get on with each other, but they've got a bigger evil that they're, they're fighting against. So it's very much a character driven book and um, John and Mike are really clever in the way they're getting artists that they feel, I think, connect with the stories that they're trying to tell at that period of time. Yes. I mean, how closely do you work with John and Mike? Everything I draw goes through them. Everything. Yes. So um, I get the script, I send in layouts, then I do my pencils and then my inks. That's my process. And everything gets kind of uh, like checked by them, as well as the editors at Dark Horse as well. So Scott and Katie are also very yes. much involved. Yes. I mean, obviously, your, your art is quite meticulous. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that the reason, I mean, apart from stylistic reasons, I'm assuming the reason why there are breaks for the artists yeah. during the stories is to give you a chance to basically catch up. It is. It is partly to catch up. But also, I mean, I get a buzz about the other, I'm excited about the other artists that they bring on board as well. Yes. Uh, when you've got like James there, James yes. brings such a kinetic energy yes. that I absolutely love seeing his work kind of thing. And the way that it kind of, it's kind of I like, I, I feed off the other artists oh, as well. Okay. And I think also then they choose a story for me that's maybe a bit darker, yes. or a bit somber or quiet in certain yes. periods. So James works on the really fantastic kind of kinetic stuff and then I've got the dark somber stuff oh, kind okay. of thing. But luckily, I've, recently I've been drawing the Black Flame stuff yes. and um, that's been just great for yes. me. He's such a perfect villain. I mean, how different is it working with uh, Mignola and Arcudi to work with someone like Rob Williams? Oh, um, if I'm honest, this is quite an interesting thing. I think, um, I mean, I've worked with Rob a number of times and there's certain people that I would call, certain writers that I call like an artist writer and they're people that think really visually in their stories. Yes. And um, John and Rob both do do that. They yes. both kind yes. of, they both complement the artist really well where they, they are, they, they, I think they can see the visuals in their head yes. and they know what strengths that artists work with. So they, in some ways, those two have got very kind of sim, sim, uh, similar sensibilities. Yes. I mean, obviously, Guy Davis has a long run on the series. I mean, was there any, well, I guess, was there a temptation? I mean, you don't draw like him anyway, no. but was there an extra temptation to kind of step away and do something quite different? I mean, you're a very different artist anyway. But... I, 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 if I'm honest, I don't think I was brought on board to be no. Guy Davis. No, no, of And course. in some ways, I wish I could be more like Guy Davis. But um, I think at that period of time when I was taken on, and I don't know for sure, but Hell on Earth is going on, and I think they wanted a kind of a, a darker, grittier, and human kind of view of the Earth, as it were. And yes. that's probably where my strengths from Marvel Universe versus Wolverine come yes, from, yes, and yes, how yes. that fitted into that yes. kind of thing. So, I mean, I look at Guy's stuff in raw. I mean, he's. His imagination on designing monsters and machinery is just fantastic. Yes, yeah. but I mean, as an artist, you're quite sort of old school, and I mean that in a good way, in yeah, terms yeah, of storytelling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, storytelling is obviously always key, and, and you're one of, you know, you're one of the best exponents of storytelling in Thank kind you. of modern comics. And I guess it's, you know, it's always, you can always tell what's going on. Yes, I, I, and I, I guess that's very yeah. important for you it, as an artist. It, it's totally important for me, it's the main thing. My view is kind of to visually communicate, so therefore, 
I read the script and then I'm, my job is to communicate that script in a visual language. And that's the number one goal, is you've got to understand what's going on. If, if I'm not doing that, then I'm not doing my job. No. I was going to ask you about the covers. I mean, I realise that the covers, some of them are composite images. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of, well, I guess the cover is like the showcase to the book. Yes. I mean, do you, do you approach them in an abstract way? Do you say, right, this is the cover, I wanted to give the flavour of the issue without being a, you know, like a direct retelling no. of one of the scenes? Yes. I mean, is that, is that yeah. how you approach your covers? I, I, I really like doing covers. I never really had the opportunity to do that many. And um, the good thing about them is um, they appeal to my, I, before I got into comics, I was working in graphic design. Yes. And it appeals to my graphic design nature. it's like a movie it. poster, basically. Exactly. It's kind of a movie poster or a book. And yes. you've got to sum up the feel of the actual, uh, that whole issue in, in one, one image. Yes. And um, yeah, there's kind of, some of my favourite ones are kind of almost like the quieter scenes. Yes. But other times you can connect it with the amount of issues there are. You find a you find a theme. Yes. And yes. then you work with that. Theme. Yeah, yeah. So are you on BPRD for the long haul then at the moment? Um, as far as I know, I am, and I want to be. Of course, uh, that's yeah. the thing. Let's say that um, I'm 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 certainly up to the end of we're coming towards the end of Hell on Earth. Yes. And I'm there for the end of Hell on Earth, okay. and then it enters the next uh, stage. How many issues have you drawn off the top of your heads? Um. About 15 issues of Hell on Earth. That's pretty, once that's, they that's come pretty out. impressive. That's a nice, yeah, really yeah, chunky that's, run. Well, it's what I want to do. I, I'm, you said about being an old school artist. Yes. My dream is, frankly, is to work on on a book. I want to be a long term artist. Is it like a body of on, work? To exactly. say, I, I'm the guy I did BPRD for a year and a half. Well, and here's, yeah. Here's I think Guy, guy is the person who draw, uh, is kind of who's, who's drawn BPRD. But I also, yes. I'm, I've always wanted to kind of be connected to a story. Yes. And frankly, what I love about BPRD is that it's got a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it's, we're coming towards the end of the middle, and then we've got the end. Yes. And, I, and I like that. This is this is a this is a story that's being told, and then that's it. There is no kind of you know, going on, and oh. I love that. Oh, okay. No I mean, I mean, stylistically, has your art changed at all over the course of the Hell on Earth yeah, run? It has. Um, is that a conscious decision? Partly, I think, since working um, on the BPRD, I've become a lot more um, aware of. Kind of, they would say, kind of old school comics. My love for kind of more old school kind of creators has really taken. Like, like who, for example? Oh, um, well, I, you know, I bought a really batch of low grade um, Kirby Fantastic Fours, which yes. I, I never had before, yes. kind of thing, and that was exciting to see. Um, a new love for Kurt Swan. Okay. So it's kind of all these artists that before I'd seen and I wasn't that fast, but now I'm really into. Um, so kind of, it's, it's brought out that side to me. It's brought out side, experimental side. I started. Your stuff is quite European washes. sometimes as well. Well, the amount of black. Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah, black, yeah, and, yeah. and think, the way you use lines is quite European. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's something that I. I it's not something that I, I thought style, about. It's just yeah, to I, see if it yeah, work. I think it. I think every eye should look to evolve, and that's what I'm doing really. I just keep on pushing it a little bit. I want to explore washes a little bit more. Um, at some point, I'd probably like to take my time on something a little bit more yes. to just play and experiment a bit more. But yeah, I'm having a great time. It's I mean, how how, how tight are your pencils when you start when you start a page? Well, when Does I first vary? when I first started out in comics, um, they were very very tight yes. in the way that I, um, I I was unsure who was inking me, so I, I put everything down. Yes. But now that I'm inking myself, I can leave out some bits. But okay. I, what I do is I use my pencils pretty much as a test. Oh, really? uh, so I, I test out my washes, okay. and, I, and it's almost like a fill for the final page. I mean, how many times would you revamp a page, or is it normally, no. do you want to get it right the first time? Um, the generally, it's, no, it's all worked out for me in the thumbnail stage, in oh, my head. It? Okay. Although it might not look much on the page, yes. in my head, I've you know where it out. Is. Exactly. So, 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 what is, so what's the purpose of the inking stage? Is it just to, to add a finish to the page? It's or? the finish, yeah. And sometimes, you know, the page does evolve as you do it. Yes. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, majority of the work takes place in the thumbnails. Yes. That's the, and in my head, that's when everything is being placed. It's interesting because some artists like, they, they like a bit of latitude in the inks because yes. they like some more problems to solve at the inking right. stage because they're worried that if everything is sorted yes. in the pencil stage, it comes too tight. Yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. nothing else left to tell with the yes. page. Well, I think I, I purposely keep my pencils, uh, sorry, not my pencils, but my inks quite loose. And that's a that's an actual decision on my part because if I didn't, I, what I don't want is to become stiff, tight, and as you say, flat. Yes. So that's the reason why if you see my original art, there's patches on it, there's tipex on it, because it's quite fluid yes. on where I'm working. Yes. Okay. So you're on B4T for the long run, I mean. Yep. 
Uh, I guess there's a possibility you might work with Rob again at some point in the future. Um, in theory, I mean, yeah, possibly. You know. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about maybe doing a dread together, but that's going to be some time. Of course. Off. I might... So I guess you're on BPRD for at least the next year, at least. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, say. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and yeah, and beyond. So. I mean, working on a book like this has it made you get a little bit faster in terms of your process because it's a regular book, and obviously you're pencilling and inking your work, and you've got quite a reasonably tight schedule yeah. to stick to. I think that's where kind of almost like professionalism comes into it and also yes. experience of working in comics in the past yes so and also what I would also say is uh, the editorial team at uh, Dark Horse are fantastic because yes. well, they're very they're, experienced they've they're very experienced for such a long time and they're also aware that you know kind of uh, what an artist needs yes um, so you know they they're really good at scheduling. So yes. they do give you that extra time for scheduling, yes. you're rotating the artists and things like that. So, so Mike basically, just Mike is involved with the plotting, isn't he, John's scripts? Yes. Is that yeah. basically how it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I say, everything goes through, every, every page I send in. But you don't get layouts from Mike, do you? I mean, no, that's the time, don't, I don't get layouts, but sometimes <laughs> you get, um, you might get layouts for a panel, oh, or really? you might get So you make suggestions and designs. say, this might work well if yeah, you do it like this. Yeah, this is like what this. I was thinking, and things like <laughs> oh, that. Nice. And, uh, I know yeah. it's very interactive yeah. stuff. And it's, you, just... you get a buzz out of it. I certainly get a buzz when I see these images. Yeah, so, no, that's, that's great. That's, that's very, very cool. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, nice. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank, Thank you for your time. time.